Now in the third millennium BC, we see a new civilization developing in the Indus River Valley. These are the Indus Valley civilizations. And they're going to flourish between 2600 and 1500 BC. So going back to the time of the Egyptians, the time of uh, Mesopotamia and the Fertile Crescent, really a very ancient society. Early cities will be oriented to the four cardinal directions, north, south, east, and west. We see multi-story homes built of kiln-dried brick. So in the west, we often see mud brick. Uh, basically mud bricks that are made, dried in the sun, and used to build. In India, uh, in the Indus Valley, they're actually kiln firing these bricks. So they're putting them in a kiln, and that's going to result in a much harder, more permanent form of brick. Now, unlike the West, there's no apparent temples or palaces, which could mean a few things. You could read into that that they're a very egalitarian society, that they have no need for religion. Or it could be that we haven't found them. Or it could be that we did find temples and palaces and we haven't properly understood them. Maybe they're particularly small. Maybe they have domestic gods. Who knows? But don't read too much into things when we say there's no apparent temples or palaces. We don't know what that means yet. There hasn't been enough study. Now, from the Indus civilization, as we're kind of moving through, I'm just giving you a real quick primer on the area here. Uh, we also will see the development of Hinduism and Buddhism, both of which will begin around 500 BCE. So roughly 500 years before Jesus, uh, this would be uh, right around the beginning of the classical Greeks, uh, very early in the Roman in the Roman Republic. And what we're seeing is two belief systems. They're actually very similar and play off of one another. By the way, in the East, you can have what we in the West would consider two religions. You could be Shinto and Buddhist at the same time. Uh, you can be Hindu and Buddhist at the same time. They look at these as elements within life. Maybe I worry about Shinto at death, but I am Buddhist in life, so I would have a Shinto funeral. There's a lot of ways of breaking it up. Also, in the East, a lot of these are seen as ways to live life, uh, philosophies for life. So it isn't a problem to have multiples, just like you could be Stoic in certain circumstances and you could be more Epicurean in others. Now, Buddhism and Hinduism develop at this roughly the same time. Uh, Buddhism, we're usually fairly familiar with. So we have, for example, our founder, Siddhartha, the Buddha. We have the Eightfold Path, which is their uh, sort of basic tenets, basic teachings. We have the Middle Way, this idea that you do not live your life, you do not uh, become spiritually successful purely through ascetism. In other words, purely through giving up on pleasures, but rather finding a sense of moderation. They use the idea of meditation as well as the idea uh, they're interested in nirvana because who doesn't love Kurt Cobain? Hinduism is, on the other hand, polytheistic. By the way, you'll notice there's no God over here. That is because Buddhism is agnostic. It is irrelevant to the Buddhists whether there is or isn't a God. It's not about God. Uh, so you can see where a Buddhist would, might have this as sort of a philosophical idea, and this is more of a religious one. Hinduism has the Vedas and Upanishads, which function as scripture, uh, and that's a real generalization there. We also see a trinity of gods, Brahma, Vishnu, and Shiva, which can appear in multiple forms. Now, in common, we don't have one holy book. There isn't really a Buddhist or a Hindu version of the Bible. They both believe in a cycle of birth, death, and rebirth. They believe in dharma, one's duty, and karma, that your actions now will affect your next life. They look at good deeds, and they don't truly have a supreme being. Uh, Hinduism, of course, has gods, but we don't have one god who is more powerful and overlooking all of the rest. 
in terms of a timeline, uh, what makes this interesting when we look at this early timeline is we see the development of Buddhist ideas and Hindu ideas, and they're all happening before Christianity. And because of trade on the Silk Road, it is possible that some of these ideas from Hinduism, Buddhism, Confucianism, etc., do actually make it into the West and find their way into Western religion. After all, the time of Jesus is actually going to be after the time of Buddha and uh, Confucius and others. So kind of trying to give you a bit of a, a timeline here so you can put things in order. Now, both Hindus and Buddhists have a strong artistic tradition. And most of the oldest of the Buddhist works will start with the Mara dynasty. But as Buddhism spreads, one thing to understand is it's going to change as it spreads, which we've seen in other cultures. Uh, Buddhism, of course, starts in India, will spread along the trade routes. Uh, you'll notice that these are primarily uh, in red. These are trade routes, including this one here, starting in China, moving along through the Middle East, uh, through what is today Syria, and into Europe. In fact, it would come through Constantinople and head for Venice that way. That is the Silk Road, and that is how Buddhism travels. Uh, we have parts of the Silk Road that, of course, extend down into India, uh, so it travels to your, towards Europe that way, it travels to China on the Silk Road, and then it travels along seaborne trade routes as well. So let's move on to some Buddhist art. <laughs> 